Everybody, welcome to Men on Purpose, the new podcast series talking about wealth, health, and communication to give healthy examples of masculinity to the next uh, generation, to educate you guys listening at home on tips to save you time, energy, and money so you can live a healthy and happy life. Uh, we have special guest, John, here. Thank you so much for joining us, John. Hey, nice to be here, Zach. John Miser. Yep. Great to Thanks, see you, John Miser. You're awesome. We connected a couple of weeks ago. We're connected through the Healy community. And I just really valued our conversation, your experience. You know, I guess you'd be considered a, an elder in the tribe. And, you know, you're double my age. So you have so much experience. Um, and I'd love to just do a deep dive on a couple of amazing topics you shared just the other day. So I know that everyone at home will listen and get so much value out of this. Uh, just a quick little intro for you, John. So for everyone at home, uh, he's a foreman, former Silicon Valley executive, lifelong health nut, Western A. Price chapter leader. He's a time waiver user, radionics operator, frequency specific microcurrent practitioner, a man amongst person, lifelong learner, sun light seeker, delusion buster, scuba diver, snorkeler. <laughs> and if any of this is of value to you guys, please reach out to him. I'll put his links around here for you to get in touch. Uh, I'm personally using a, a personalized program from him uh, with the Healy to help clean out my fish tank, which will be a metaphor around health and wellness I'd love to dive into. But before we get into that, John, uh, please share us your story and how, how you came to be who you are today. Well, well, thank, I think it's just taking one breath at a time, you know, keeping <laughs> the life going. That uh, helps. <laughs> <laughs> that was a mouthful for me. So, yeah, yeah, over to yeah you. <laughs> right. and, you know, and it's kind of funny, you know, we always give these introductions and it's like, you know, why pay attention to me because of blah, 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 you know, credentials. I've kind of learned, it, you know, to kind of begin to ignore credentials. When I left Silicon Valley, I was you know, vice president. And I, I was really hooked into, you know, oh, I'm a title, I'm this. And then, you know, I looked in the mirror and it's like my buddies, my fraternity brothers, they just still saw me as John, you know, get off the high horse, don't have this. So I've kind of like, you know, I'm kind of like almost like, well, if, if what we talk about resonates, you know, go take a look and look into it, not because of any kind of, uh, you know, credentials behind my name, but, you know, go do your own search. Uh, you got a good brain and, and figure it out that way. But um, it, it's, it, it's, a, it's a way that I've kind of begun that, because I've questioned many other people in these positions of authority, especially as we've been living in these, these crazy times now, right? And we've got these guys who uh, are, are health ministers and, you know, all these kind of credential things. Uh, um, deluding people in the wrong direction because they've got these alphabet names behind them. So it's like, I don't want to have people think and follow me just because there's some string behind my name, but let's just kind of feel the vibration and see how it goes from there. And, uh, you know, do your own research because as you're trying to do men on purpose, I think men have really got to figure out who they are, what they're trying to do. And, um, be grounded in themselves as their own, you know, build the truth, get rid of the delusions in their mind. And, you know, we can kind of launch from there. And that's, that's been a long journey of mine along the way to continue to evolve and build myself. And, you know, you joke and you say, okay, yeah, that's right. I'm i I'm a very different guy now than when I was 32, <clears throat> you know, like you just shared with yourself. So uh, if you guys can do the math, you now have my age, but uh, you know, I still play hard like that. I'll snowboard and, ski and surf and barefoot water ski and do all the kind of crazy stuff uh, but um anyways that's i am i'm just uh, in in you know love to learn and love to connect with anybody so absolutely again, and i i felt that when we when we connected you just have this excitement for life you know you you kind of like where i'm probably going to be when i'm your age with all these amazing <laughs> health hacks you know, yeah. just all these you know, fun adventures. You, you just you, the other day you're at the beach or something. I think you're, um, uh, you know, out and about. So yeah, it's just great to uh, actually know you're 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 somewhere else. But uh, I was at the beach. So yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm I was so... at Hawaii. I was snorkeling. There we go. Oh, that's right. right. Yeah, because I'm like it's winter in America, but yeah, <laughs> you're in Hawaii. So awesome. Um, yeah, take us on that journey. So like, ha what did you do in Silicon Valley, and what what did, what was that all about? Yeah, so in Silicon Valley, you know, uh, basically when I got out of college and stuff, I um, 
you know, wanted to earn a living and wanted to, uh, you know, I got on the gerbil wheel of life and uh, I got involved in sales. So I was uh, really good at it and um, uh, rose the ranks and went into Silicon Valley and was in uh, sales for companies and sales management and executive sales management. And, um, you know, that basically meant like working 80, 90 hours a week, you know, because I wanted to chase the almighty dollar. And that was, that was kind of when I had the epiphany when I was hitting, uh, you know, my 40s, I kind of said like, wow, I'm, I'm not giving all my life for this particular purpose. And this is like, uh, you know, I had, I had, uh, I had uh, lost a marriage um, because I had fertility issues. Had that was idiopathic; people didn't know why, whatever. And uh, I kind of thought, well, you know, I think there's more to life than what I'm doing, and I want to go figure out. And that's what led me onto my health journey. You know, so I was about 40 when I I started to do like what you're already well on your way, which is like congratulations for what you're doing at that younger age. I started in my 40s. And, and and going after uh, health and across all spectrums, physical, emotional, spiritual over there. And you have to kind of tie all those in together because if you're, if you're an emotional wreck, it's going to show up physically. Angry people are going to have a bad liver or, you know, that kind of stuff. It, it just, it happens that way. So um, I think I shared with you my value on, um, you know, my priorities. Health, number one, family and tribe number two, wealth, number three, and then wrapped up in spirituality. And kind of the analogy that kind of really kicked in for me is a lot of us all know Steve Jobs. We all have our iPhones and tablets like that. Well, here he was 56 years old and died. Pancreatic cancer, multi-billionaire. And I kind of thought, wow, you know, his priorities at some point in time of chasing the almighty buck or the prestige of being, you know, the top of the ladder, bright as he was, I love Steve Jobs. But maybe if he had shifted earlier, he still might be with us over there. So health is the first part. So I like the fact that you're a biohacker on health, Zach, and what you're trying to do with your men on purpose to try and help give guys, uh, men, you know, what, you know, who we can live for and get ideas from all of us. You know, all of us are better than any one of us. So that was, that was a phrase that my dad used to say, all of us are smarter than any one of us. So, Yeah. So interesting, 100%. He died from pancreatic cancer and he was a fruitarian apparently as well, right? Which is like, so the sugars processed through the pancreas. And I don't know, yeah. I kind of connected the dots there. I was just like, like you should, hopefully you'd have some amazing health people around you to maybe give you some insight, um, hopefully before these things happen. So what a tragedy. Mm. Yeah, tragedy. And you kind of look at the, you know, it's a good metaphor when you say that. I didn't realize he was a fruitarian. Uh, but it's like, as you and I both know, with like Weston A. Price yeah. practices and, and then sunlight that we picked up from Dr. Jack Cruz, you know, that's yeah. that's how I got in, involved in sunlight. That's why I moved over here to Hawaii for right now. But, um, <clears throat> you know, people not understanding the basic elements of health and how do you achieve health? Well, it's actually been it's been robbed from us. Uh, you know, with the with the uh, John D. Rockefeller medical model that was started back at you know the the at the beginning of the 19th century, and with the Flexner report that just transitioned everything into how to make a buck on people that are sick by selling them pharmaceuticals, and people don't know that. So here today we've got our supposed good people in medical schools that are educated, indoctrinated indoctrinated, enculturated into thinking they're thinking the right thing, but they're actually be learning the wrong thing about what's health. I mean, who amongst your tribe all of a sudden starts to have what they have, quote unquote, a high cholesterol level. And then all of a sudden they're going to say, well, you need to take Crestor or Lipitor and you're going to take that for the rest of your life. And, and the, the um, cholesterol numbers have been getting pushed down lower and lower because you get a bigger and bigger market right and the people can begin to kind of see this so you know men on purpose are going to you know come into maybe these podcasts and begin to question what they've been taught and begin to try and unwind stuff and you know i can't get really cranky at my doctor from way back when i mm -hmm. the poor guy or gal was indoctrinated yeah they didn't know they were practicing what they called medicine and, you know, writing another prescription. 
So I kind of learned like, wait, who are the ones that are breaking out of that model? Because if we've all been enculturated into a model and everybody sings the same tune, like the lemmings all walking for the cliff, and all of a sudden you do an about face and you're walking against them, and the whole tribe is like looking at you, nutcase, nutcase, conspiracy theorists, whatever you want to call it. And you're going like, I wouldn't go that way. I wouldn't go that way if I were you. <laughs> you know, all of a sudden you don't realize that everybody's starting to get autism and everybody's getting heart disease and everybody's doing this. Everybody's getting more cancer. There's been a war on cancer for 40 years and it seems like it's still exploding today. Not a very effective war fighting thing, is it? So men on purpose are going to wake up and start to question the common narratives we're living in. And what a beautiful time this last two years has been because there's a certain population of us that have seen this, have stood up and have turned it and said, no. And we've been shunned and scolded and, you know, blasted by other people. But if you know, we're out there, we're reading different sources, trying to gather it in to get smarter and smarter. So men on purpose are going like, you know, I got to get self-educated. I can't rely on the schooling system that I was brought up in. The schooling system we were brought in, I mean, in, in America, right, right, where, you know, quote, unquote, I'm from, right? Actually, that's a joke, too. But um, <clears throat> when they started to move over here, what they do to the natives, the Indians, first thing they did is they started to put them in missionary schools, and they grabbed the children so they could educate the Indian out of the kid to indoctrinate them into a certain way to go. Oh, you know, isn't that nice? So that's what's kind of happened to us. That's how they create a culture. So then they begin to go like, oh, now we get everybody running down the same pathway, believe in the same stuff. And, and you don't even realize that you're in an aquarium, right? Of a thought process of your mind. I mean, there's those quotes that, you know, the best prisoner is one that thinks he's free and is imprisoned in his mind. I forgot who said that, but that's a pretty cool quote over there, you know. So I, I don't know where, you know, as we riff through this, but that's kind of, you know, uh, lifelong learning, continue to challenge healthy skepticism, looking for this kind of truth kind of stuff. And, um, you know, I'm really grateful that, you know, when I bumped into uh, Ely two and a half years ago through an old uh, girlfriend, led me into it. And, uh, <clears throat> Two and a half plus years ago, we had a lot of similarities. We shared a lot of, you know, health similarities and things. So when all of a sudden I saw her put a little post up on her Facebook page and, you know, talked about this amazing little tool. And wow. And at the time it was, you know, buy it. You don't like it. Turn it back in 14 days. And I thought, well, that sounds good enough. I can go give this thing a run. And, you know, they had, you know, one of their classic promotions going on. So I bought the Mac Daddy one, the big top one. And, uh, got it and um, ran it. And I remember talking to her brother, you know, my, my old girlfriend's brother said, uh, uh, yeah, you're not gonna return it, John, you know, and he and I were both health hacks. And he just said, oh, you're not gonna return it. So, oh, okay, okay, fair enough, Paul, well, let me see what happens. And uh, well, he was right on that. And that quickly led me on a path to like, where does Healy come from? Oh, it comes from Time Weaver. Oh, okay, I gotta get some of those, so. Anyways, that led me down that path for uh, time waiver and wherever. But so I don't know where we go next. I'm just yeah, gonna, this is great. You planted such a great foundation here. To on, right? Totally. We could be here for hours and days. I'm sure we'll have to get you back another time. But there's so many great things you touched upon there, whether it's the, the you know, talking about, you know, Steve Jobs dying at such a young age and being a billionaire. I also heard the other day I was at this entrepreneur party on the weekend. So much fun, you know, young people doing incredible things, changing the world, making money, helping people. And one of them said to me, he goes, two billionaires died last year from suicide. They committed suicide. And it just goes to show that just because someone has all the money, more money than the majority of people, that they're still emotionally um, dying, I guess, on the inside. And so, wow. yeah, money's not the answer. Money's not the answer. Mm. Uh, and, you know, some people who think that they're being healthy, right, whether it's the fruitarian or some kind of dietary um, <laughs> dogma as well, we kind of convince ourselves that things work until they don't. So um, I love the fact that you're looking at so many different perspectives, whether it's the the freedom piece or the history piece, looking at, uh, 
you know, America being from the Native American Indians, that's that's a massive conversation. Same here in Australia. You know, the white man yeah. took over the the Aboriginal culture and have indoctrinated their the rulings everywhere so and i'd love to talk more about that freedom speech or the the um freedom convers freedom conversation around um our own true identity whether it's a spiritual identity of why we're here and the laws and the the crown law mm -hmm. or whatever it is that you know that would probably be another conversation but yeah let's let's dive into the healy thing so you got a healy right we've got our yeah. healies here uh it looks like you've been running what have you got on there john you've got your uh, I ear, got clips. ear clips I bought, I bought some ear clips um yeah i don't know if, the, if you get ear clips when you order your healy in australia we do there. but the other countries don't have the compliance apparently yeah they don't have the compliance so here in the u.s i found a place where i could buy ear clips ah nice three bucks i yep. went through a couple different brands till i finally found a good one <laughs> And, you know, for 20 bucks, you can get these great little ear clips. And I like it because then I have my hands free. Great way to deliver the, uh, you know, the microcurrent over there. So, um, yeah, so that's that's kind of, that's how I kind of got into this. I mean, I'll, I'll use the wrist or I'll put them in the, you know, the sticky pads. Yeah. To put them into location areas to to run, um, you know, to run my Healy that way. And, and then so I've really loved, no, go ahead. No, no, you go, you go, you know. Uh, yeah, and then I've really loved, you know, the the uh, the programs that Healy has given us is, you know, like I told you, I, I, I had shared with you before, um, I created a weekly user group here in the U.S. for when I had shared a bunch of Healy's, not so much for the business side to promote people on it. In fact, it wasn't at all for the business side, but it was really to help people. I wanted to both learn what other people, you know, create a learning community so that people could share what their experience was, what they were running. And then I would help them with all the technical difficulties as we know we would have with that, but, um, and then learn and then share what I have gleaned from others. You know, I might've watched something you were doing down there in Australia and I go, Oh, Zach's got a good idea here. Let me go grab that. And, you know, I'll share that here with the group on, on that. And, and, um, you know, we just had some amazing stories of different people doing different things. In fact, just this last week, one of the ladies decided to run a trial. Uh, um, in her garden up in New Hampshire and she's got a greenhouse and she had some little aphids on it and then she had a uh, a little pond that was kind of getting stagnant so for a month she ran through and she did some Healy programs on both of them the aphids are gone and the pond is better now and she goes that's the only thing I did John I go wow Judy that is really kind of a cool testimonial I that you know, so it's like we get to learn and it expands our idea of like, well, where else could I use it? How else, you know, can I use this little device and what might happen, you know, where we go here? So that's, um, yeah. And I'm, and then, as you know, as a time waiver user, I'm able to create these custom programs. So some of the people might have had some conditions or, or things that they wanted, you know, we'll use the more uh, good language harmonize their bioenergetic field you know it's nice marshmallow talk but that's what we get to say you know, so we don't have to <laughs> get into trouble you know if we're not in a public forum you want to talk to me one-on-one -on -one, then we can have a real conversation but i can harmonize your bioenergetic field and uh how's that feel so and we can Excellent. actually do some nice we can actually do some nice work for people over there to really help them help them move Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, so everyone interested in, in learning more about that, definitely reach out to John. Uh, I like that term there, the marshmallow definition, <laughs> <laughs> sugar-coated marshmallow definition, uh, because yeah. the, you know, well, why, why is that important? Because sometimes words can shut down companies because if people make claims about this will cure, prevent, reverse, treat, diagnose, uh, that's, yeah, that's not in the yeah, playbook. So that's not in their playbook yep. and and we just have to abide by that it's just the game so you know healy is not designed or any of these devices guys disclaimers not designed to cure prevent reverse treat diagnose any illness or disease it just helps harmonize your bioenergetic field <laughs> make sure i point <laughs> right. that out so yeah, let's break exactly. that down so we're good. Yeah. yeah then we can say whatever you know, we and want that, no, no, no. And so where does that come from remember that comes from yeah. you know with people who do their history work and they'll see that john d rockefeller co-opted the medical field 
this is what I wanted to get into. Maybe you can take us on a bit of a journey on the history of frequency therapy, maybe the history of, from your understanding of, of the system we live in. Um, and then I'd like to get into like more like, how does this work? I want to know about that story, the acre tree and the, the cleaning the pond with this device. Yeah. Anyway, there's yeah, so right. many amazing results. It's frequency. Everything is energy, frequency, vibration. Uh, the secrets right. of our universe, Nikola Tesla said, that's where we right. find energy frequency right. vibration so yeah I, I just like to start with that kind of history talk take us on a bit of a journey of like why is this yeah where, where does this come from and then why is it so relevant today why is it popping up why are we talking about this for, you know and we had a perfect metaphor with what we're having with all the covid stuff for you know i don't know where people are at but you know on the spectrum um so john d rockefeller when the, he used to own standard oil Standard Oil was the largest oil company in the world. He was the richest man in the world, you know, with a company, not the guys who print money, but John D. Rockefeller, you know, as somebody that was earning money through that system, was the richest man in the world. And Congress here in the U.S. Which, uh, was breaking up Standard Oil into, you know, Exxon, Mobil, Shell. They were breaking up that oil company. And um, uh, uh, Rockefeller had decided, well, okay, so I got to break up. What am I going to do with my, you know, load of wealth? Decided he was going to move into the medical field because everybody needs medicine. And so he moved into that and he hired a guy by the name of Flexner to go across the U.S. to survey the landscape of all the different practices and all the different schools that were alive and flourishing here in the U.S. And Anybody can look it up on the internet, Flexner Report. You can get the exact date. I think it's about, it's between 1910, 1913. I, but in that thing, so Flexner, F-L-E-X-N-E-R, uh, the Flexner Report, it's there. It's like about a 300 plus page report out there on the internet. And he documented the different categories of, um, of healing that was going on. Acupunctures, homeopaths, energy doctors, chiropractors with the goal to basically start to drive them out of business through legislative action, making it illegal and whatever. And then on the same carrot, he created a charitable foundation. And then he would go to the Princetons, the Harvards, the Yales, and go, here's a grant if you start to teach pharmacology medicine. So anybody who wants to go be a good doctor doesn't realize they're walking into this bubble of this culture that's already going into this monopolistic way. And they're kind of told, we're the best, we're the brightest, we do this. Where have you heard that before? You know, you watch my fellow Americans, oh, we're the best. Or, you know, you know, Australia's, we're the best. Or, you know, uh, Argentinians now winning the World Cup, we're the best, right? Everybody gets this, you know, false sense of we're the best um, kind of stuff and mentality. So anyways, Dr. Royal Raymond Rife, which is a name a lot of people have maybe heard of, created the Rife machine, created frequencies, and was doing phenomenal work documenting all of his work. He, you know, he was healing people of cancers over there. Well, that doesn't do too good if all of a sudden you got a medical model that wants to have a lifetime cancer patient, and all of a sudden here's some guy using frequencies that basically cost next to nothing, <clears throat> and then you can have people healed you get them off there, there's no profit to be made in healing. So, is there, but there is profit to be made of lifelong treating. So that's the model that, you know, everybody, when you finally dig into it, you begin to see. And now, you know, Bill Gates has set up the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And here these guys are, you know, setting up and he's got his Gavi and uh, all this, this little peripheral organizations to then begin to manipulate the, you know, the World Health Organization. And to, you know, you got a guy, Tedros, who's running it. He's not a doctor, came out of, uh, out, out of an African country, uh, a very corrupt African country. And here's this guy was sudden heading up the World Health Organization. He's not even a doctor. You know, so they, they, they create these fields of influence to um, indoctrinate the masses. And then it takes somebody smart like you. Zach, you know, because you're figuring it out, you're going against the narrative, figuring it out, and other people in your tribe, so men on purpose, you know, are going to go through, it's like, well, what bubble am I in, and go verify me, don't believe me, don't believe me on anything I'm saying here right now, this is just John doing his own research, challenge me, 
you know, Zach will give you some stuff. We can go through and challenge it. I don't care. I'd love to be challenged because I've told people I'll always pivot 180 degrees in a nanosecond, you know, because I'm a truth seeker. And if I've, and if I've been, and I know that I've been deceived, you know, we all got to figure that out and humble ourselves and go, where have I been deceived? You know, you don't know it. Deception by it means that, you know, only the truth will set you free from deception. So no man who has ever been deceived has ever known it until the truth sets him free. And then you go, oh, my God, I used to believe this and it's really that. Wow, I was arguing for this instead of that. What a dunderhead I was. Does that make you a bad guy? Does that make you evil? No, you were just deceived. So in where we're running right now in this whole COVID pandemic stuff, there's a lot of people that are still really deceived. I've got siblings that have run down that other path. You know, you know, I've got a sibling that's highly educated, three Fulbright scholarships, racing to the front of the line. I need to get that next booster. And I kind of go like, wow, can't talk to her can't talk to her on that. So it's like, you know, I have a lot of compassion for people, you know, strongly held beliefs will kill people. So it's like, okay, I gotta have compassion because maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you, Zach, or maybe somebody here in your tribe convinces me to go somewhere else. Okay, I'm open for it. You know, healthy criticism over there. So um, I think that kind of sets the model that we're in. So Healy, bringing it back into the Healy over here, we've got this amazing little microcurrent device and, and everybody quotes Tesla and everybody quotes Einstein. So everything is composed of frequency, energy, and vibrations. Frequency, energy, vibrations. You go, wait a minute, I, I feel solid, but no, we're really not. We've got this atomic theory and atoms and wow, I'm just kind of dense. And then there's enough experience now as you've been sharing this tool you, with your friends and you go like, wow, what did you feel? What did you get? And, and people start to have, you know, empirical proof of something changing. It can't be a placebo effect across this many people. You know, Taryn did a nice job setting up the frequency experience page and, um, you know, gave us something where you could see where a lot of people would begin to share what they were doing. So I, I have that with my group and with the people here. And I'm just, you know, like my number one value is health. And I want to get health for everybody else, my tribe over there. No, I like Again, I went, on a long, I went on a long thing there. So where do you want to go next? <laughs> what do you want to dig in on? Sorry, That's you're... exactly perfect. <laughs> the, in that flow state and 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 talking from that point of view is um, really important. And yeah, it is to question. You know, we need to question everything and to ask where have where has the world been deceived? But more importantly, where have I been deceived? And make it personal to our own lives. And if we were to all question our own, um, I guess, yeah, education, where do these where were we educated where what were the what was the curriculum that was set up before we were born that now we're learning from these establishments on structures and information and um yeah um everything before i was born you know whether the monetary system or the education system or uh learning about you know film and television for when i was doing acting and television there's so much behind the scenes right whether it's right. Uh, the movie the, the power of different music um different songs over the same scene whether it's like a comedy or a ho horror you know changing just the sound creates a completely different feel and that message will be will land more effectively so the art that most of us have learned through movies news social media uh books you know schooling and uh yeah, these concepts are so powerfully, it can be so powerfully presented. And so, yeah, what if the people behind the scenes, you know, we say them, <laughs> who is them? And it makes a lot of sense. So with the, um, I've got it right here, the Flexner Report, it was 1910. You guys can check it out online. Um, and so, yeah, that makes total sense. So they created the problem, problem solution. That's what we learned in in sales is problem solution or in, yeah. uh, uh 
you know, and anything, you know, we all want to save uh, solve problems. So the, they created the problem though. <laughs> they said that this is the problem, but it was their problem, but not our problem. We want to have holistic wellness. We want to have a holistic community. We want to know all these different healing modalities, Chinese medicine. It's been around for thousands of years that know more about the human body than we do today. Um, I'm fascinated by that, you know, using the Healy with the meridian clocks, with the organs, it's just, it makes total sense. So yeah, if there's been mm. a problem forced in a certain location and then they've offered and incentivized doctors to create and sell their products that they create through the pharmaceutical industry, it's genius. It's, it's evil, but it, but it, do you think these people, right, are doing it from a state of, um, or, or the consciousness intention to do harm, or do you think that, that they think that they're doing good? Because at the end of the day, no matter how thin you slice something, there's always two sides and it becomes mm -hmm. to our perception. You know, someone might be have two people see so the same experience. Someone experiences that as a empowering belief of, you know, um, self-belief and they, they're empowered by it or they look at it, the other person looks at it and they're feeling disempowered or you know, angry and frustrated. So it comes back to how we perceive things. So my question, and this is just coming up right now, is those people that maybe be running the the future of the messages for the narrative of the world, do you think that they're coming from the frame of they they think that they're doing good or they are actually intentionally doing evil, so to speak? Because if there is duality, mm -hmm. If there is duality and there are good people, I believe that we're the good people right here, but in the dualistic model, there has to be the equal and opposite type of person as well. So there must be out people mm. out there doing evil, but then does that come back to our perception of that? Because maybe they think it's good, but we see it as, a, you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, no, I mean, it's a good question. It's kind of hard to uh, you know answer what somebody really thinks to get into the mind of a criminal right so there's a guy named ed dow d-o-w-d that just put out a book i forgot the title i probably could look it up here in a second but he was a former black rock manager he actually lives over here on the island of uh, maui and he's just put together a book and he's trying to go through with the mathematical models and you know just using math and and uh, and facts and showing this like all cause mortality coming out. And so it was kind of interesting why I brought him up, you know, in, in reference to your question is, um, you know, when we had somebody like a Bernie Madoff, which if people aren't familiar with him, he was a real fraudster here in the US in the stock market here just in the last you know, decade or so. And, you know, he was perpetrating fraud, Bernie Madoff. And um, as he was going down, I mean, he began to lose some, he was running a Ponzi scheme essentially. And he was beginning to lose some investors, but there was a core group of investors that continued to believe in him. And, you know, and the regulators are starting to sniff around the ways and he had the right regulatory relationships to carry on the fraud, but they were deceived. They didn't really know. But, you know, what did Bernie do? He doubled down. He doubled down. He continued to go at it even more, uh, you know, running his criminal enterprise. So how about these people you ask about what they're doing? I mean, in the face of what's beginning to happen now with this pandemic that we've been faced with, um, you know, we're starting to get a lot of science. I mean, everybody kind of knows somebody. I mean, everybody that I talk to knows somebody that, ha, you know, ha, who has taken the jab and the jab has injured them in some degree or another. They have some some story. Oh, all of a sudden, uh, you know, uh, a, a cancer that was not there is now flaming off or a rheumatoid arthritis or a myocarditis or a sudden death syndrome. It's gathering. And people are gathering the evidence and they're continuing to suppress it. So you ask, like, what is their mind? Well, I have a sense that they're going to double down and do whatever they can to continue to suppress it. What is that mindset? I don't know. I guess that's kind of a criminal mindset and, you know, getting away with something. And do they know that they're doing something evil? You know, I, that's a good one, you know. That's an interesting one. At, hey. at a certain point in time, how do you work for an organization where you know that you know, the product you're selling is killing people. Yeah. Yeah. And this, is why, know. this is why a lot of these whistleblowers are coming out because I guess their consciousness can only handle it for so long. Yeah. This guy, apparently, you know, um, Bernie Madoff, he created is the largest Ponzi scheme in history worth over $64.8 billion. 
Wow. Yeah, just deli- just nailed people's bank accounts. You know, so to to shift, you know, hopscotch a little bit back to something you said, you know, through our education system, because we're trying to break through deception. You know, what are, you know, three big things that affect every man here? Three big things that affect, in fact, affect everybody. Well, you know, and in our education system, how much do we actually get taught this? Or are we kept willfully? What's going on, you purpose-driven human you? Thank you so much for checking out this interview. Zach Dean here. If you had any aha moments or questions, please put it into the comments. And while I have you here, I'd love to ask you a quick but powerful question. Do you ever dream about turning your passions and purpose into a business that helps people and makes a profit, but you don't have the energy or skill set or community or training to do so, then listen up. I've actually created this. This has taken me 10 years of working with over a thousand people in the health and wellness industry. I've created what's called the 28A Club. These are 28 actions of specific biohacks that give you the optimal energy, focus and results in all areas based on quantum science and quantum biology. As you know, the frequencies in nature, when we align to them, allow us to become our fullest version. They allow us to become a high performer. When we disconnect from nature, we become a low performer and it doesn't help to activate our purpose in life. And so if you'd like to download this, this is a free copy. Go to www.28a.club slash join and you can download it. Join the club of us high performers and I look forward to seeing you in there. Ignorant. Health, money, law. Every one of these things affects everyone. You know, you say the phrase, it's the law. What's the natural emotional reaction that happens? Oh, scared. It's the law, right? Where did that come from? Why should you be scared of the law? But that happens and you're willfully ignorant and you go, well, if you don't know the law, you need to go get an attorney. Got to go. And you can't just get any attorney. Got to get a good one. Where do all these thoughts come from like that, right? Money. Where does money come from? How does money work? What is, what, you know, whose money is this? What is money? Money comes from moneta. Moneta is the, you know, was the Greek god and it's a memory. It's a memory of a debt. Whose debt? What? I mean, you can explore these concepts, but if we've been taught money, law, and health in school, I can probably guarantee you we would not be anywhere near this kind of mess that we're in because we'd have a lot more people that are critical thinkers. You know, we're not taught where, you know, that was like back to the very beginning with your, you know, your nice introduction of me, Zach. I was trying to say, like, do away with titles because people, if you just listen to me and go, oh, John said this, well, you're kind of running down the same rabbit hole because you don't know who John is. Nobody here really knows who I am. You get a picture, you get a vibe from me. I may like him. He's a likable guy, but you don't know me. I don't know you, but you know. We've got to go through and do our own thinking and find these truths and build up where we can stand on on a truth where we've got a bedrock of knowledge and not, you know, I believe because so-and-so says so. So when we get back to our Healy, we get our Healy, you know, you say to whoever you're talking to, hey, this is a great little device. All right. Well, I take it on Zach says so. That's a belief. I don't know. <clears throat> Sarah may say it and... You know, <clears throat> I forgot who your other sidekick was about two years ago. This Brandon, wasn't that it? Yep, yep, that's him. Yep, yep, <laughs> okay. You know, whatever, just all of a sudden the name came in my thing, and I just kind of remembered little pieces. So, you know, oh, these guys say so. Well, nobody knows so until they actually try it, right? Then all of a sudden they go through, they've got a physical experience, and it transitions from belief to what? Certain knowledge, because they're using their senses, taste, smell, you know, uh, touch, right? They, they've got their physical senses in there. And, you know, eyesight, you know, I see you. I now know Zach. Somebody could have told me, hey, there's this guy, Zach, you got to get to meet him and, you know, whatever. And, uh, you know, he's a good guy. Okay. Well, maybe Tony told me that. And I go, oh, okay. Well, I believe Tony. I like Tony, but I don't know until I know. And then we interact and we, we can separate. So, oh, boy, if we had been given a, an, an education of what is law, how does law work? It's really pretty simple. You know, uh, whoever makes it, owns it, rules over it would be like the most basic fundamental concept for law. And well, that goes into a lot of other stuff. So I'm not going to go there, but that's that's it in a nutshell. 
And um, <clears throat> then we go to, you know, money. How does money work? What, what, you know, we could have a conversation for an hour on money. I could go deep into that versus the system we have versus what money really is. But this is what men on purpose are going to do. So I kind of feel that I've been a man on, a man on purpose, you know, since my 40s, right? You know, because I was on the gerbil wheel of life. I was trained. I was going there, get a good job, work real hard, do this, earn a lot of money, you know, blew through a lot of things. And I went, wow, what have I, where have I gotten? Yeah, that, and that's what led me into, you know, our, our, our buddy Weston A. Price on food. And then food led me into, you know, Weston A. Price, look at this, as good a work as he did. And I don't know if your audience knows it, but Weston A. Price, dentist in the 30s, looked around. No, tell the story. Way. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. I, I don't think many okay, people know okay. about him still. It's yeah. He's, he's an absolute. I'll give a short pivot, elevator pitch on him. Pivotal pitch, person. Okay? Yeah. Great dentist out of Cleveland saw a transition in his practice, people getting more cavities. Thought to himself, wow, I wonder if there's populations of people that don't have cavities. And then if there's populations of people that don't have cavities, what are they eating? He had the means in the 1930s to go travel to a variety of 14 different cultures, found cultures of people that had no cavities. They didn't have dentists. They didn't have toothbrushes, but they had perfect teeth. He took thousands of pictures of their teeth. You see this book of his where they're taking all the pictures of the teeth, and he documented all this good work on, on um, you know, and he broke it down into four basic food groups, fats, organs, fermented foods, and uh, raw, raw dairy. I think that, you know, if I got it real quick right now, but those were the, the main food groups to eat. And they found that across the Swiss Alps down there in, in, in Australia with the Aborigines and the Majoris over in New Zealand and, and the Eskimos up in, you know, up in Canada to the Maasai warriors over in, in Africa found these basic food groups are real things. Now, I think Price missed one thing. What's the one thing he missed? He was out there observing it right in there. Jack Cruz taught us this, light. Those guys were having a good light diet too. They're out there, they're grounded, they're in there, but Price didn't bring that into his thing. But does that do away with his work? No. But it's like, golly, if Price had looked at there and goes like, well, these people are out in the light, they got their feet in the stir hand, they're, they're in nature, and they're eating these good foods. So I don't think that you can have just a light diet and eat Twinkies. I don't know if they've got Twinkies in Australia, but that's kind of a real big junk food up here. <laughs> But, you know, that's kind of it. And, and then now we've learned, you know, and like the sun is like the amazing frequency. And all of a sudden it comes down there and it gets grass and you get a grass fed cow eating that converts the grass in there. Good grass fed raised beef, uh, you know, so you can create a good nutritionally dense profile. And that's what men need, because if you don't have a strong physical body, well, then you're going to have a weak mind because you don't have the physical capacity to think. So men are purpose. Have, that's why I say health is number one. Men on purpose have got to take care of their health. They've got to take care of the sacred chamber. And we've now learned with Healy, we can go through there because you're now, you know, you've been working with this product for a while. It's helping in, in, in you know, heal you up. And then uh, when we met, I said, hey, I've got a couple programs I'm going to send to you that will, um, from what I've learned to build in a, in a custom Healy program, to actually really energize your whole detox system, your blood, your uh, kidneys, your liver, and your lymph system. And I use the analogy, which I think you're now sharing with folks, of an aquarium, you know, a fish aquarium. If you got a dirty fish aquarium and you want to try and treat your fish, you know, over here, I think we called it ick, and they got some kind of little skin disease on their scales, and you could drop into the methylene blue into the aquarium. Well, how effective is it going to be if you got a cloudy, dirty aquarium? No, you got to get the filtration system cleaned first before you start to work on this specific disease issue. That's what those two programs are designed to do is to optimize Zach's, you know, ability. And what a beautiful way you can interact with, with me or with another time we were therapists, whatever. And then they can help create these programs that you can use this beautiful tool to really take control of your health. And then you're going to be a man on purpose because if your health is good, now you can do some good critical thinking and start to unwind yourself and, and like, you know, be, be men again, right? And then I think real women will start to go through and go like, oh, I think I want a man. 
You know? You're, you're connecting so many dots here, John. That is such such an interesting way of putting it all together. And yeah, whether it's the physical health or, you know, just learning about your food and the environment, the sun, what Dr. Jack Cruz talks about, or Weston A. Price talking about the study uh, and the book um, on, on teeth, right? Really? It's like, it's, right. it's, it's, it's following the answers. It's following truth. It's, it's being open. It's being comfortable enough, as you said before, to do 180 degree turn on something that might not be the direction of truth the the truth because i think there's so many people especially in the new age community it's like this is my truth this is and then there's your truth and then there's the truth and i do my best to speak into the truth because i know that Mm -hmm. my belief systems my perception on reality based on my trauma and my experience my beliefs or whatever like uh, values will will create a distortion in what I'm experiencing. So I love the fact that, yeah, you're a truth seeker, uh, you're valuing, basing it in health, basing it in uh, free thinking. Um, apparently in the Bible, right, the devil was considered the deceiver. You know, right. whether this is this, the spiritual war going on or is it's a metaphor, like it's, but it's real. This is, there is deception going on at all stages. And you touched upon money. Are oh, those three things, health, if we'd learn about health, the world would be an amazing place, uh, wealth, Money, moneta, right? Mm. Moneta, one who, yeah, moneta. one who warns, is a goddess mm. of memory, prosperity, yeah. finances, and money. The English word money derives from her. The title was given to two goddesses, Monanesia and Juno Moneta. Uh, she's also a goddess of marriage and advice. She is depicted wearing robes, holding scales, and a cornucopia. So. And then you touched upon, which is etymology, the history of words, the history of the English language. Right. And then that feeds into the legal system. And if you, what did you say? If you create the laws. Whoever own makes law- it, owns it, rules it. Well, I well, said so we need to learn the law. That's the one thing we're willfully kept ignorant. Nobody knows the law, except you're just supposed to be scared. And then when you need it, you get to go run out and hire, hire, hire a lawyer, you know, at uh, 500 bucks an hour. Right. So they can go through and navigate some legal system. Yet you're responsible for following the law that you don't understand that you were never taught about. But you got to go through and, you know, all all that kind of, you know, craziness. Yeah. uh, um, You know, where it's uh, you're just um, they're disempowering us. Okay, they're 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 disempowering men. They're much easier to control if you're if you're willfully kept ignorant. So. You got to have the health and vitality to have the, uh, you know, because there were people that were fighting in the Weston A. Price community, in the Jack Cruz community. And they're like, wow, don't you guys see, you know, there's some, th- th- there's more to it than this. Well, you know? What do you mean that they were, they were arguing between well, there their were, there, there, there were just some little skirmishes, you know, it's like, right. oh, no, Weston A. Price, beliefs. you know, I get some, yeah, some of these Jack Cruz people go like, oh, uh, no, it's just all about light. Oh, really? It's just all about light? So you get uh, the morning sunlight, the evening sunlight, you get all that good light. You know, you use blue blockers like this to protect your eyes from the, you know, what we understand the blue light to be toxic of. And uh, and then you can go eat whatever you want. And I, I can try it. I've tried it. Don't feel as good. I, might, I do much better if I get my, you know, my liver, my fermented foods and uh, my bone broth and, uh, you know much more vitality you know i'm 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 you know i'm 64 and i want to have vitality i want to be able to i want to have a healthy life until all of a sudden the day you know the plug gets pulled you know and so that's it yeah. I, I'm, I'm the same you know i tried just to do and i was eating quite healthy when i found out about all the quantum biology stuff from dr jack cruz and then i added in the sunrises and going to sleep when the sun went down and doing the blue blockers and the red light panel at not, not during the day or at nighttime for lighting, I felt amazing. My anxiety dropped dramatically. Um, the clarity in my mind, it definitely added to it. But then I got lazy with the diet and I was like, oh, I'll just do the sun quality, you know, the, the quantum stuff without the diet. <laughs> oh, really? And then, and then I put, I started putting on weight. I was getting fat because I was eating whatever it was. So, and then I've, came back to more of a healthy balance between yeah up to see the sunrise as soon as I can in the morning right it's not like I have to see the sunrise as it comes up every day I was quite you know when Mm. like if you ever started a health thing a health 
uh, concept and being like a hundred percent strict on it. Like when I was vegetarian and vegan and paleo, I was like, that's the mm. only way I think that the rite of passage. So I kind of did them quite strictly. And now I have a bit more of a flexitarian with, you know, up, up with the sun every day, down with the sun every day, call it lead with meat. Right. I tried the carnivore thing, which was amazing, but I needed extra bit of carbs. So I'm adding a bit of fruit, seasonal, environmental, you know, what's at the, at the local grocery store and uh, farmer's market, right? right? E- eating seasonally with the seasons as the food changes. Yeah. yeah. I think these all have a massive part to play, but you can't just, you can't just be in one. I think, yeah, it's like the spices, these all add up to the recipe. And this is what someone said the other day with the purpose talk as well. It's like each chapter of our life, whether it's a, a three month experience with a hum- with a, with an intimate partner or a new job or like a five year um business or whatever it is there's purpose in those experiences and then there's like a greater purpose and if we look at the history of the planet with wars and when there's war there's uh, obviously massive shifts from different empires to be run by a different civilization and uh, the men let's be real the men are the ones that get sent to war sure some women come along too but it's mainly men and so if the men are weak sick um, you know, there's certain foods in the food system to create more estrogen, whether it's soy, right? Or whether mm. it's, you know, veganism, vegetarianism, lowering testosterone, um, or the blue light at nighttime, ruining our hormones and our sleep cycle, causing more mental health issues. You know, there's a war on not just masculinity and femininity, but there's a there's a war on family and there's a war on mm. creating conscious, free thinkers, healthy, strong, successful, ungovernable people. So that's really what this is about, is unpacking that. Right. Well, really good point. So kind of, you know, we can touch on this lightly. So it's really been like a war on who made us all. So people go like, oh, you know, uh, mention creator, mention God or Big Bang, whatever. I mean, I kind of I'll simplistically go with somebody go like, well, you know, can you get something out of nothing? You know, this guy, if I talk with, you know, even, you know, atheists or whatever, they go, I don't believe, okay, okay, well, can you get something out of nothing? We've we've been here in reality, you can kind of see that everything comes from something else. You know, puppies come from mom and dad dogs, apples come from apple trees, which an apple seed. So everything that we experience in reality, we can see that it comes from something else that precedes it. That's it. That's just using your good brain. And then you go, can you take something, you know, can you take something and make it nothing? No. Okay. I can burn this, but what's it going to turn into energy smoke? It turns into something else. Might not be this same something, but it's going to go into something else. So just for me, just using my good old brain now that I've gotten healthy and I can begin to think and I go, well, heck, there must be at least a first something. And we're all the second somethings. You know, I kind of, I'm simplifying it because you, I can say, you can say, well, no, I don't believe in that, John. I got, you know, well, Zach, did you have parents? Okay. So you didn't just spontaneously exist, did you? How about, how about your parents? Did they have parents, you know, grandparents, great grandparents, ancestors all the way back? So somehow, somewhere in the very beginning, there had to be a first something that made all the rest of this stuff. Call it Big Bang, call it whatever you want. I'm just going to go call it the first something because I'm, I'm speaking in simplistic terms because as you mentioned a while ago, you got to etymologize words and language and that can take us off in different directions. I would have been saying this whole thing as God. Well, I get a whole bunch of people going, God? Oh, I don't believe in God. Or, yeah, I believe in God. I believe in this religious God or I believe in that religious God. Takes their mind in a thousand different things. So I just go, let's just call it the first something. And let's just go from there and go, okay, well, if there is a first something, could we rationalize then that if it, and we agree on this, that it made everything, okay, would it own what it made? Kind of seems to me that it would. If I made creation, and this creation here that we call Earth hadn't prior existed, but this first something made Earth, couldn't couldn't he, it, she, whatever you want, whatever pronoun you want to use, couldn't it go, that's mine? I mean, who else could claim the earth as theirs? Could anybody? 
Oh, okay, so now we got a pretty good concept. Whoever made it owns it. Oh, wow, that's a pretty cool concept. I never thought of the earth having an owner. Why has that knowledge been hidden from you? Hmm. Well, whoever owned, whoever made it, if they owned it, wouldn't they be the only one that could make any rules about what to do with its stuff? How could anybody ever make any rules about Earth, something we didn't make, make rules? You're on mute or something because they're not coming through on me. No, no, I can hear you perfect. I'm just, I'm, okay. I'm leaving it unmuted I, so you're in flow because oh, okay. I'll edit, I'll edit it later. No, you're. I was just yeah. like, this is fascinating. Yeah, keep going. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just trying. I'm just using my good brain. You know, we've gotten a good, healthy platform. We got our sunshine. We got our our Healy frequency vibes. Our time waiver vibes. I got a good brain. I'm gonna go think. I'm gonna try and just do some good because men on purpose do thinking. They want to go through and unwind it. I want to go through and get a concept because before the concept was they never taught me about law in school. Why is that? That's the thing that affects me the most in life that I know the least. I know the least about something that affects me the most. That doesn't seem like a very advantageous position to be in if I'm going to be a man on purpose. To be willfully, and not willfully, I was not willfully ignorant, but I was ignorant. I never had the idea that whoever made it owned it, ruled over it. Oh, so I got an owner. Well, who's my first owner? Mom and dad. But nobody ever thinks of a child being owned by a mom or dad. But you go, well, we can't have that kind of concept. Well, what do you mean you can't have that kind of concept? Can a neighbor come over there and tell the other neighbor's kids what to do, when to go to bed, when to go to school, what chores to do? No. Why not? Not your kids, my kids, not yours, mine, my property. I tell them what to do. Oh, sure, there might be an emancipation kind of thing where maybe I don't tell them everything again, but the only thing, so that just says, then the only one that could ever tell my kid, the, the only one that could ever tell me what to do would be my mom and dad and whoever that first something is. Because we wouldn't be here but for that first something. So that first something owns everything. And that would be the only one that could tell us. But that's not what we're doing here. We're going making rules over stuff we didn't make. Oh, hi, we're going to go call this Australia. And we're Australians. Right? Have you ever seen Australia? I'm not talking about the land thing. but So, you know, if you lined up 10 men... And they were there and, you know, maybe some were from what you call Australia and some from what you call New Zealand and some from what you call, you know, America or England and you lined them up. Could you pick out the Australians from the New Zealands or the Americans just by looking at them? Um, no, because there's unlimited types of looking people. <laughs> Different. Right, right. But But now if you said, oh, wait, if you lined up those same kind of people there, and then you lined up their parents behind them and you had a mix. Could you maybe start to do a pretty good job of picking out which parents produced which people? Sure. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Whoever, right? Oh, wow. So there's a, a likeness that's associated with who makes you. Yeah. You look like your maker. Wow. Yeah, I can say that for sure. <laughs> Uh -huh. Right. But an Australian doesn't look like an Australian. <laughs> Australian is just a fictionary concept mm. in our mind. I mean, if you went through however many years it was, I forgot when the English came over and you know started raising, you know, horrible problems with the Aborigines. But if you would have gone to an Aborigine, let's say 500 years ago and go, I'm an Australian. What the Aboriginal would have looked at you like, local what's a what's an australian <laughs> <laughs> right absolutely yeah so that's our mind right see these these uh metaphors these illusions have become so normal in our mind that we think of them as real don't even give it a second question or a doubt 
don't even give it a second question or a doubt. So you go like, oh, okay, well, I guess Australia owns Australians. Because they can tell Australians, lock down, shut up, stay in your house, don't go out in the street or we're going to find you. And you're going, wait a minute, I'm free. No, well, I'm your daddy, I'm the fatherland, and you're the son. You're the per son. You know, they call Australian, I don't know, they call over here, they call it the fatherland, the motherland, you know, wherever they go. And, you know, we're sons and daughters of, uh, you know, they call it here, sons and daughters of the American Revolution. Uh, you know, they have all these things where they create these metaphors. We go, well, that's not real. I'm a son of my mom and dad. I'm not a son of the American Revolution. That's just a made up name. I'm not a son of, you know, America is the fatherland. Oh, okay. Well, what did you father, America? Did you actually father something or are you just a fictional concept? Right? If you start to really begin to play with this stuff, you can start to unwind it. And that would be going into a longer conversation on law. That would be a going into a longer bit uh, on that. And, you know, a good website on that for the guy that lend, led, you know, lend, you know, really helped me begin to go on my journey in this way and, and put together. And then he said, don't follow me. I'll show you my path. Don't follow me. I'll show you my path. Because if you start quoting me, you're sunk. But it was called servantking.info. Servantking.info. So I know you're looking some of that stuff up and taking a look at this stuff to go look at there. But that kind of gives you a sense of law because we're trying to cover men on purpose. We need health. We need we need wealth. We need our um, communication. So we're we're dialoguing here. And as a tribe, if we're going to try and elevate ourselves, we can challenge each other. But it's like, OK, get healthy. Don't take the jab. Eat good food. Get sunlight. Right. Do some good work, get some things so you've got the resources to feed and take care of yourself. Communicate with one another. Let's start to figure out what's going on. We've been deceived and we didn't even know it. And we got good brains, they've just been mucked with. They've been mucked with, but can we take, think about that, think about the problem. I've got a disease that's been enculturated, right? You go culture, enculturated. You know, you've heard of these crazy groups like uh, Jim Jones, those guys that went down to South America and 400 people who drank Kool-Aid and then they all died, right? And they get, right? And you start to go like, how did that happen? How did somebody get people to believe that stuff to willingly go follow along? Mind control. It's called culturation. People go off into like the moony things and they go, how do we decult somebody? Well, don't you think there's an Australian culture? an American culture. We've been inculcated to a certain way of thinking and behaving as group. How do you break out of the group? Good health. That's why they don't want us healthy. Take the jab, get a little sicker, get a little weaker. You're much easier to work as cows on the farm and we can get you to do stuff. And you won't even think. And then, you know, if you get pushed too much and you don't like it, you'll brave. Ah, ah, you know, you won't like what you're doing. And then you go, ah, just let me go watch my World Cup. It's really good. I'll drink my beer, have a good time, watch the thing. We'll talk about sports and I'll bray about, ah, it's not right. That's not how men on purpose are. We've given a false sense of manhood. I mean, trust me, I like watching Messi, phenomenal athlete, right? Not taking anything away from them. But that's not our role model. That's not a role model for men on purpose. I mean, very good. That, I mean, it's a role model in a certain sense. If you dedicate yourself and you do something over and over again, you become the best at it, right? But that's not a complete sense where you've got like, a, I don't know, did you guys have wagon wheels over there? Did they do that then in Australia? So this analogy work where it's got the wooden spokes all around it? Well, like a bicycle with spokes, right? Which one? So What's it called? Spoke. Well, a wagon wheel. So in America, a wagon wheel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Called, yeah, we yeah. have this thing called covered wagons, but it works with a bicycle. You still got spokes, but it was very, sure. you know, very. You could really kind Segmented. of see the spokes coming yeah. out, right? So you got to have all. You got to develop all your spokes. Your your mental, your spiritual, your capacity. You can't just have, 
you know, you see what happens when you get somebody who's a genius, like a Messi. It's like, wow, he's really developed his athletic spoke and his athleticism, you know, with what he does with a soccer ball and on a field. Just phenomenal. But how well has he done on his other part of his life in these other areas? Maybe, you know, nothing wrong with that. I'm not knocking that at all. But can we, you know, get everything here so we form this, we become more of a, a, a full man, really knowing who we are, where we are, you know, on that. So I see you've started screen sharing. I haven't gotten anything yet. Can you see end. this, John? Oh, no, you can't see it. No, that's okay. No, I, was just gonna I can't put, see anything. I was just going to put on the wheel. <laughs> Here we oh, go. Oh, okay. What, got what it. about that? Can you see that? Nope. No? Okay, no worries. Take oh, the there thing. it is. Oh, you got it? There it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the last a second ago it was there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, just just for the the visual representation. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, it's so, so important. How, so what were those areas again? Just for everyone. Oh, so you can take each or one of them. So spiritual, emotional, intellectual, critical, you know, the different parts of your athletic, you know, uh, your sense of community, being, you know, a good partner with your, you know, your 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 spouse. And, you know, you have all these different parts, you know, your working relationship. So, you know, if I looked at me when I was in my 30s, Zach, I, I was bent out of shape. I was so driven to do well as an economic man. Yeah. I ignored my health. I ignored, you know, I didn't, my, my sense of play, all that kind of stuff. I was distorted. Okay. But like you say, like the other speaker, you said, oh, it served a purpose. I would at least was able to reflect and go, oh, I don't want to have a wagon wheel that has one really long spoke because it probably is not going to roll very well. Right. It's going to have a lump and a bump and, you know, and how does that show up? Well, you know, you might lose relationships. You could blame them, or you can look on yourself and go, what did I do? Because I probably am 50% of the cause of that loss of a relationship. I'm not going to do any good by being a victim. I get nowhere by being a victim. So anytime, you know, that happens to me now today, I look into myself and go, okay, what did I do to cause this? Somebody else may still maybe be, may, might have a greater sense of cause, but I'm equally, you know, I'm involved in that relationship, you know? So with my my first wife, you know, it's like, oh, in the very beginning, it's like, if you would have talked to me, you now it was all her fault and da, 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 where our, our marriage didn't work out. And, you know, a lot of it was, you know, fertility issues on my part where I didn't have the fertility, you know, that a normal guy should have. And, um, and then, uh, but emotionally, I was, uh, my, I, I laugh at it now. I mean, and this probably will resonate with a lot of the guys. You go like, oh, you know, how do you feel? Good, bad, you know, and that was it. That was the limit of my emotional language. And then I started to learn about, I, I kind of denied that I had an emotional side. I thought it was all rational, right? So I would, I would go, good, bad. And, but that doesn't do any good because, you know, all of a sudden, I learned that, oh, boy, this look at it under anger, there's irritated, irked, miffed, agitated, all these different little shadings of emotions. And they go on in the body, whether you want to pay attention to them or not. So then all of a sudden, you know, I'm talking with somebody over there, and I go, well, I'm not angry. And I just stuff it down in the little box. And next thing you know, some little minor thing happens. And then I go like big burp. And they look at me like, you know, Chinese head, but I feel completely justified by doing what I did because I don't know that while the initial thing may have been an irritant, but it got amplified what was buried and I couldn't separate the two because it all felt like one to me. So when I began to learn, I had this emotional energy in me and I was like, oh, I need to pay attention to this. Women have got something to teach me here. They're you know, they're much more on this emotional side. You know, we were beat up as, you know, kids and like, you know, men, real men don't cry over there. Well, you know, it's it's taken me a long time to begin to learn how to cry. And I'm still not real good at it. I mean, you know, women can beat me hands down. And there's some guys that are much better at it than me. But it's like, it is a blessing to be able to cry. Because there's a certain physiological, emotional thing that the body needs to cleanse itself through that mourning, tearing process that we were beat up on and not allowed to do, right? So again, here we are, health. You're not crying. You're going to stuff something. It's probably going to show up as some type of disease state later on because you can't keep suppressing that emotion. You know, 
or, or you know, we all know people that they go like, oh my God, they got they got high blood pressure. Well, there's probably somebody that is not processing their anger too well. You know, so we're just touching on a variety of different topics here. Absolutely. But men on purpose. Yeah. This is what it's all about. So yeah, the men on purpose concept is three things wealth and health which are so interchangeable they're pretty much the same in my opinion you know i've had i know super successful very wealthy people who don't have the health so that's not true true mm -hmm. fulfillment people who are really healthy but then don't have enough money to buy the healthy food or whatever it is that's or pay their rent that's not fulfillment and the last part is communication so this is the communication point communication with self communication with an intimate partner communication in business communication on social media you know these are all kind of concepts that we're living in so relevant for people and that's why i like the chinese medicine stuff and the meridian clock and the healy and how this all comes into play where the emotional state do we feel anger was it the liver was it Mm -hmm. so yeah, got sad mm -hmm. sadness in the heart or grief, grief. Yeah, gr lungs you know lung grief, grief. grief the lungs. Yeah. Yep. yeah kidneys is fear apparently mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. these emotional and apparently the same frequency of fear or um sadness or grief that frequency gets stored in these organs because that's the same frequency as well so then if that happens over and over and over and over again it's going to be impacting the liver and the kidneys and the heart and the lungs and all these different parts of the body. And then people blame it on, yeah, as you said, a culturally accepted disease term. And if someone has cancer, heart disease, diabetes, then you give them the pills and then that's fueling pharmaceutical industry. But then you look on the emotional side where we're not taught the communication piece of this is how I'm feeling. This is what's going on for me. And most people, I'm still learning that myself is to identify why I might be feeling something. There's an uncomfortable ability in my body. I feel unsettled. I feel it in my heart or my belly or my throat. There's a, there's a tension, you know, I kind of say it's anxiety or like an overwhelm or exhaustion or, you know, but to mm. unpack that in a safe place, because usually people just want the quick fix. Just go do this, get over it, go, just get up, just get up, just keep going. Just, you know, get back on the field or go, go study study more or learn more train gym or whatever it is it takes away from that so i think it's really important to create safe spaces where we can learn these communication skills and they're just skills you know i've learned some amazing skills over the years that have helped me then figure that out and then i've met some amazing people that we then do a, a, a meetup every friday brandon has a space called uh, the elevation hub and it's a weekly check-in where we just have 10 minutes to just rift and whatever's on our heart to share and we we can't give advice we just ask quality questions to help unpack that and i've only been doing it the last couple of weeks he's been doing it a couple of years whole story there but even just the last couple of weeks in that space has given me more of a grounded uh calm belief in myself that it's okay to share vulnerably and that i can mm. share things that are on my heart that are uncomfortable and feel confident about that i think in the past i was always worried about what i was like if i was yeah considered weak or men don't cry or um just yeah not being fully uh, yeah, feeling uncomfortable. I didn't know how to communicate that because men, we've got to be strong and provide and keep going and, you know, which is just bullshit, which is important, but it's also important to deal with the emotional side too. So yeah, that's a massive part of why I wanted to also start this discussion because what we what you've shared today we weren't planning on any of this you know we could we, we could have gone yeah. in a whole bunch of other other directions but it's um you know it's flowed well, so organically well one thing that you know that i've known you know to bring it back into healy and her time we were that i've noticed with with those tools um you know by working with them over a period of time i've had people come up to me and go like well you're different from an emotional psychological perspective kind of a way you're coming across mm. more you know with less, and 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 I got reflection and I thought you know I'd done you know therapeutic work before and had done that kind of work but you know in the space of like um, 90 days or something I was able to achieve phenomenal kind of results time waiver and then hooking it up with Healy kind of stuff that was really um, you know because they kind of 
you know, they get in, you know, especially time waiver, it kind of gets into your broom closet. You know, you can sit here with me and you may not know exactly what it is. You've got some issues going in there, but, you know, on a, on a time waiver session, you know, which is the, you know, the mothership of Healy over here, it can kind of dig in there and it can, you know, bring up stuff that you're not aware of and begin to go work on it without you having even to be aware of it, conscious of it. And it just begins to peel these layers for you that allow you to even, you know, kind of accelerate and progress faster. Faster, if you will. So that's, a, you know, I'm just bringing it back to our technology. And we've got some of that, you know, bottled up in the Healy under the uh, rate of homeopathy and the Australian bush flowers and uh, the uh, Bach flowers, uh, you know, programs over there and the blue dot that, you know, are also, you know, uh, very beneficial for us, you know, in, in this community to to continue to do that. Um, you know, I, I one thing that what got me off the, the, the gerbil wheel was as you talked about communication over here we used to have a big radio guy on cn i mean a tv guy on, on cnn larry king and he was interviewing <clears throat> um you know you're talking about these two billionaires that suicided themselves this isn't a suicide story but he was interviewing a billionaire ted turner if you don't know the name ted turner he owned the atlanta braves he started cnn he was mr captain america you know, on the yacht sailing things, he owns a big swath of Montana, a big swath of uh, Argentina. So here's Larry King interviewing him on the show. And um, he went to Ted. So do you have enough? You know, why he goes, why do you keep working? And Ted goes, I don't have enough. And I thought, that's incredible. That's a disease. That's because how can you not have enough when you want a baseball? Oh, and he also had the trophy wife, you know, Jane Fonda, you know, daughter of Henry Fonda. So he had everything that you would imagine that would make you fulfilled. Yet he had a hole in himself of, you know, I don't know what it was, but a deep psychological hole. That's where we got to kind of do this work, you know, and that's where I think Time Waver and Healy can help peel these things on us. But we get over this thing of, uh, I'm not good enough. I'm enough. So what? I've got a job. I'm, I, I, I do whatever I do. I'm enough. I've got my relationship. I got my buddy Zach here. I'm enough. I've got a good friend over here. I got a friend over there. I got my friends. I got my community. I'm enough. I want to I want to be a human. Um, I don't want to be a human doing. I don't want to be a man doing. I just want to I want to be a being a being. I want to just be. You know, not do to be evaluated. You know, that I'm only as good as vice president, blah, blah, blah. So that was the thing that got me off the gerbil wheel and started really going down this path here to have the freedom to really become, you know, I guess, you know, kind of let's fit in with your thing of man on purpose over there. Absolutely. So that's such know, a great so story, that's though. What, that, yeah. That's, that's, yeah, that's so interesting. Yeah. So you you seeing that, that was the interview that you that you saw when you were about 40 that kind of, helped you question really? this is where i'm going if i keep going this direction and this is the person at the top and he's still not happy he's still not fulfilled he's a billionaire and he still thinks he doesn't have enough he's got the best wife and the opportunities and impact so then it's like everyone at home listening what are those identities or goals or i guess areas of of uh, where you're aiming your, your your arrow which area you're going in what path are you walking down at the end of that path are you still going to be fulfilled are you still going to be healthy mm -hmm. empowered wealthy you know have the love that you mm -hmm. that you so desire in that reality why not have that now and how do you do that yeah. now well we have conversations like this we use technology like healy or time waiver we eat healthy food we get in the sun we get in in sync matching up with nature to you know empower us through the frequencies that are god given uh the the one in the beginning given <laughs> um and so that's that's what this is all about self empowerment for sure free thinking um and not being mm -hmm. on the hamster wheel getting off <laughs> getting off the hamster wheel and stepping on it right and creating right. your own, own reality with that and and i love that the deceiver or you know the slavery someone who thinks that they uh have that they're not a slave thinks like what what was that quote there it's like we I, said, are... I said it was essentially it, you know the the best type of slave is one who thinks they're free and don't realize they're in a cage yeah 
Yeah, totally. So most people think they're free. I have so many friends coming out now and saying, oh, it's so crazy that the world's just opening up with for COVID. You can, you know, I flew to Thailand. I flew to Dubai. No PCR, no masks, no vaccination requirements. And then my friend's like, well, it's crazy. It's all stopping. It was such a waste of time. And I was like, yeah, it was, wasn't about health. It was about the control. And he's like, oh, he sees it now. So, but yeah, he wasn't able to give himself time to look I think the thing is so many people are so busy that they don't value then they're not in their own space or then they're around the types of people that are indoctrinated. So there's no way that they're going to think outside the box. So this right. is why important conversation. I always say, you know, we are one conversation away, whether it's the one conversation away with ourselves, with having that look in the mirror, one conversation away with uh, to finding our lifelong partner or love of our life, one conversation from finding a business partner you know we're one conversation away from figuring out the truth um or or the lie or the wrong direction so right yeah, we've got to value those those these people i'm so grateful i have these amazing people around me you, you know you now included i was just like i need to interview this guy and i'm sure we could be here for hours and hours and hours but coming back to the healy you know this is a device that helps to empower people through quantum technology or frequency therapy boosting cell volts like let's just let's just cap it on <laughs> and we'll probably have to do a whole another interview on this whole thing but tell us what is the healy like we, we kind of now know why it's important right where the world's at where where we've yeah. been the history kind of painted that picture really well so what is this device and then what is the time waiver and then what is the difference okay so healy uh is um you know a subset of time weaver that was basically commercialized so it could be used as a consumer device you know simply hooked up with your cell phone and could be affordably you know purchased you know a couple thousand dollars and uh, you don't have to have too much thinking with it you just push a button and and go and and, and drive these frequencies and um uh the device is able to provide uh it's got, you know, some one when you, you know, when you hook up and you actually do a program where you're hooked up to the currents, you know, that provides the microcurrent to deliver the frequencies. So this was a distinction point you and I talked about. Um, I don't know, maybe you're going to cut up the interview so it's not so long, but the um, <clears throat> microcurrent in and of itself, they've done studies, microcurrent is electric less than tens. A 10 units causes your muscles to twitch. That's at, at a voltage level. Microcurrent Healy is a thousand times less electrical current. So when you're applying microcurrent to the body, they've done studies that have proven that it increases cellular battery production. That'll just be the analogy I'll use right now. So cellular voltage gets increased. And what do cells do? Cells divide. So you have a new liver every six weeks. You have a new stomach lining like every three days, a new skeletal system every eight to 10 years. Cells divide. Well, if you have low voltage, cells are going to not be able to divide as fast, and that's going to contribute to disease. So Healy, number one, when people ask me, well, I got a coil and I got my thing, I say, oh, that's great. I would at least try two or three times a week to get a microcurrent charge on your body you know, and then use the coil, all the rest, if that's, you know, most convenient for it, because you lose out of the benefit of the microcurrent. And then Healy it has the ability to do, to deliver these single frequencies at a time into you, or, you know, that are, are, are from a database method of, uh, and, and utilizing the quantum sensor in there going like, oh, what does Zach need? Oh, he needs 528. Okay, let's go deliver him 528. You go 528. Okay, scan Zach again. Okay, what does he need this time? Boom, pick up 432. Okay, boom, pick up. And it does this thing, and they have known databases of, of frequencies that they known that help support and harmonize your bioenergetic field across a variety of areas. That's And so it's got the ability to analyze, and it's got the ability to broadcast to us. So that's what Healy does in a nutshell great little consumer device. And then it's got a page open on it where you can have expert programs. So you got expert programs, you can hook up with a time waiver uh, user, such as somebody like myself. <clears throat> There's a lot of other good ones out there too. And 
we could go through a session. That would be another time willing to do that with you on a broadcast. We can actually go through, and you can be the mock guy to do it. And we can go through, and we can build a custom program for you. Or we can go through and do a time waiver pro broadcast. So there's two levels of time waiver. Think pink dot, think blue dot, okay? There's the pink dot, which is called time waiver frequency. And that basically allows me to create custom programs for people. I've got a database of just under 200,000 known frequencies that I can also add to, you know, and go out there and I can search the Royal Life frequencies and stuff that, that maybe Time Waiver didn't put in there and add to my database set so I can create even better programs, you know, <clears throat> to deliver specifically for people over there. Um, and then they have um, the pro model. And then I'm going to circle back. Do you want me? To, you can just let me know if you want me to talk about the Mag Healy, though, the one part with the McMac and stuff. That'd be great. Oh, yeah, yeah let's like, loop it all together for sure. Okay. Okay. So then the pro model of Healy really deserves to be shown to go through there. But that thing has over a half a million frequencies. So we know Healy has how many? 144,000. Okay. And my time waiver frequency, I've got almost 200,000 frequencies for, for time waiver frequency, which is like pink dot Healy. And, uh, you know, pink dot Healy has a limited 144,000 frequencies. So you can see they have a larger database set. And so I've got more ability to create custom programs, bring stuff down to the Healy to really focus on somebody uniquely over there that they want. Um, Time Waiver Pro does it all like blue dot. It all broadcasts it. So I can analyze you. We can have a session from here to there. I can pick up your stuff. I can analyze you across these variety of databases and create these custom protocols to work on somebody emotionally, work on somebody spiritually, work on somebody wealth building wise, work on somebody physical wise, and um, you know, create vitality kind of situations for them that. They don't even have to worry about it. We have a session, and then it just runs for the next chunk of time. And then they have this in the background, knowing that they've got their back covered with a broadcast, no matter where they go. They're, they're, you know, they're in Australia. They go up to Thailand. They go to, you know, they come to America. Wherever they're going, they're captured under a broadcast 7 by 24 for a period of time. Um, <clears throat> so that's that. And then we've got the Meg Healy. This is so interesting, you know, just breaking it down to the cells there. You're mentioning each part of the body, the liver, the digestive system, the brain, the bones, their cells reproduce at different rates and yes. I guess have a different frequency. There's different frequencies that help the liver and the heart and the kidneys, I'm, I'm assuming. Yes. And so mm -hmm. they've studied the best my, well, overall, the microcurrent boosts the cell battery charge. Like if you have a low battery yes. or my phone, when my phone gets very down good. to like 2% battery, nothing's opening very well. 1% battery, it just glitches. It, it's just so slow. Kind of like if my car didn't have a battery, I wouldn't be able to turn it on. It would, the ignition right. wouldn't work too, right? So then right. I, I charge the battery with the Healy um, of the cells. And that means it's targeting when I use the microcurrent on the entire body, boosting this voltage for the whole body. And this is why you recommend mm -hmm. at least a couple of programs. Healy recommends one to three programs a day, two glass, you know, a couple glasses of water with every session, get grounded, take your shoes off. Someone who's pregnant, lots of medication with a pacemaker, you know, there's contraindications, obviously read the manual and checking with your doctor guys, but most people can use the Healy, uh, the, the vibration, what you're talking about, the distance stuff, everyone can use that, but the microcurrent, I guess there's some contraindications there, but, um, that's easy to kind of figure out. So yeah, what's, what's the next part here? So you're talking about the pro or the mag Healy. Here we go. Awesome. Okay, so now I was talking about the Meg Healy. So now this is a new uh, device. So basically what the Meg Healy is, from what I understand so far, and I was, um, <clears throat> um, I've been using it for quite a while, had an opportunity to be in the, the uh, you know, work with them on the beta program on it. But they they want to incorporate, Carol, you know, one of the, the big difference on this that I see on it is they're incorporating Carol McMacken's frequency called frequency specific microcurrent. So anybody can look it up. Carol McMacken has put together a book called The Resonance Effect. Great book. 
<clears throat> on understanding frequency technology. So what's the really big difference between what Carol's doing and what Ely Pink Dot is doing? Well, that's because that's really what it is. It's designed to either be applied through microcurrent or through like a coil. There's like a, a, a Healy coil inside this because there's no wires coming out of it, but it comes out. So we're getting the Carol McMacken, you know, FSM treatment through a coil. And so that, you know, and I've trained with her. And so they've got both. So what do we do? She uses two frequencies at a time, at a time. Healy pink dot is a single frequency broadcast at you, then followed up by another frequency broadcast at you, then another frequency. When I say broadcast, either broadcast, you know, through the blue dot or through the pink dot when it's electrically connected to you and you've established a microcurrent circuit. We all know that when it went from, you know, a black dot to a white dot or with the new Healy 2 app, it's got the wavy line going through. So it shows that we've created a circuit. Once we have a circuit, then we can deliver that 523, the 627, you know, we can deliver the individual frequency to the body and it knows what to do relatively to increase the vibration of that particular frequency in the body that needs that attunement. And, and just to jump there. in oh, here, God. yeah, and ju just to jump in here, guys, is what we're talking about, the blue dot and the pink dot. These are different apps that are on our smartphone that Healy have different technology in them linking up with the Healy device or the Mag Healy. So that's just a bit of a snapshot there. And so it, what you're saying, yeah, you've got the microcurrent and then you have the frequencies and the FSM is Caroline McMacken with her study with two frequencies at the same time, rather than the micro, rather than Healy, which is one after the other, one after the other, it's two at the same time. Is that right? Yeah. So the simplest thing is, I don't know why, but the, 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 they've got, they, they break the frequencies down and trying, I'm trying to keep this really simple in case somebody's new at it, which I was, I didn't know this and I've just been learning along the way, but they have issue frequencies and location, issue, location. So if I have a 13 frequency as an issue and I've got that frequency number 13 and then I put the number 355, that means skin, so skin is 355, 13 is scar. So if I have a scar on my forehead and I apply and I were to, you know, have a custom program, I don't know which one it is, but I already go through here, 13, 355, what it begins to do is it dissolves the bonds in the scar to help the scar go away. But let's say it wasn't in the skin, Let's say it was in the ligament. Ligament is 100. Why is it 100? I don't know. But if I applied 13, 100, if there was a scar around the ligament, it would begin to dissolve it there. If it was 396, that's nerve. And if I got a nerve that's bound up in a scar, I can dissolve the scar tissue around the nerve so that the nerve can glide freely in the body and do better things for us no or what else might be a condition i could have a thing of inflammation that would be a 40 frequency or you know i got a bleeding issue that would be 18 why is it 18 i don't know but they figured out if i've got 18 and i'm back on the skin i got a bleeding issue 18 and 355 that'll help stop the bleeding why i don't know it does it's like having a key fob for your car you got a key fob, it unlocks your car door, doesn't unlock their car door. Does it do damage to their car? No, no, pushing it over there. So if we make the wrong guess of the two frequency pairs, we're not really, caught. we, you know, almost never ever cause a contraindication. Oh, I was broadcasting 13, 355 to dissolve scar tissues. Guess what? It doesn't look like you got any scar tissues on your forehead, Zach. It's not going to hurt you, right? You're good to go. But if you had a scar tissue, like my mom did, my mom had a keloid scar, over the period of a couple of months, we dissolved it. Completely gone away. My mom had a keloid scar. She had a plastic surgeon remove it. It grew back. She had the dermatologist remove it. It grew back. It was, you know, my mom's 87. And um, <clears throat> purple, reddish color, pea size and shape. But she still cared how she looked. She's 87. She still, but she was wearing bangs to cover her forehead because she didn't like 
seen this pea-sized scar shape. And I said, well, mom, we did a combination. We ran Healy scar, because we know we've got that in there, the Healy scar. And I used, you know, we didn't have this at the time. So I used FSM because I had trained with Carol McMack and we used a combination of the two. Well, now guess what? We've got, you know, the we've got here in this device that has a bunch of programs that, uh, you know, Carol McMackin has put together to harmonize your bioenergetic field. And you can begin to experience that kind of stuff in here. And then this has some other programs where, you know, can broadcast within a range of people and, and put it out there or, you know, change the nature of your water, you know, make the water healthier over there, more ener energized or, or just your classic Healy programs in the first ones, kind of like that, the, the classic program. So that's a, you know, interesting little device that Healy's added in their, uh, you know, arsenal of products to go share, to have people understand what's going on. And it's all this technology stems from the mothership time waiver. So these are consumer versions and you probably can't see it. I don't know if I can pick up my computer here. I'll yeah, go it for it. Here. See what it looks like. Show, show us all these amazing machines. <laughs> oh yeah, see that's that? a time waiver. You got those, two of those. Those yeah. are two time waivers, right? So I got uh -huh. time waiver on top, time waiver frequency on the bottom, you know? And, uh, you know, with the, uh, you know, when I'm, uh, you know, in, in Healy, we know we have the, the you know, the little wrist straps yep. with time waiver frequency. I hold on to these metal, metal bars to get my treatment. And what's really nice about that is it's getting all these nerves in the palm of your hand. Mm. So what would be a hack for Healy? Easy. Get a sticky pad. Put sticky pads on your hand oh. and run your Healy on a sticky pad. If you're going there, if you want to kind of simulate what you can do, you know, what Time Waver and Nuno Nina have put together that way. That's Maybe a good they, little hack. That's a great yeah. hack. Maybe they could um, put a, like, create a new attachment into the Healy with the rods. Or gloves. Yeah. I've seen gloves. Yeah. Someone's had gloves that it plugs into gloves. Yeah, it'll plug into gloves. Yep. I've, I've used those plugging into gloves and the foot socks. You can buy those. I didn't have this at the time, you know, this little hack because these guys pull out the pin. Uh. Right. Now I can plug it into the gloves. Before, when I had, you know, the normal Healy, uh, you know, piece that had the snap, uh, uh. I couldn't find gloves that had the snap, but I did find gloves that could plug in, you know, they had that kind of a connection point, the male, female type. Uh, interesting. Well, this is, um, that was a great explanation. Well, this is communication, right? That's what we can learn these ha Healy hacks to build on it. So anyway, yeah. go ahead. I sh sh yeah, sharing the little tips and tricks. And and as you said, you know, you're learning and you're, you know, but in the beginning, you didn't know this stuff. So keeping it simple, keeping it easy to digest. And I think that's a great start. You know, for anyone out there who has a Healy, get in touch with John. Uh, anyone that's curious about Healy as well, get in touch with us. Um, and then, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, uh, you know, starting, I think it's the great, the greatest device for the world right now. This is the best product in the whole world to help people with their health and start their journey. If they're just starting it for the first time and they want to kind of start in their own um, environment with their own mindset and then start using this at home to start a self-care regime, cleaning the fish tank, the liver, the kidneys, the lungs, the lymphatics, you know, that's so great. Or if you want to go and keep learning, right, as the journey goes and buy a time waiver or buy these other attachments and things like that. Um, this is this is why I'm a part of it because it's, uh, one, it's a health device and I value my health. Two, um, Mental health issues have been really big in my family, and I the ear clips like you're wearing dramatically reduced my stress and anxiety and helped my sleep, which is so important for hormones and mental health. Mm. Uh, pain that I had when I have some injuries that flare up, I don't have them as much anymore. But those programs have reduced the pain, so I can exercise more effectively. And you know, when I'm in pain, I can't focus on anything. Um, and mm. then you know, the community of this, where I'm, you know, this if it wasn't for the industry of network marketing. I know obviously a lot of people have a bad stigma around it, but network marketing has allowed me to meet the most amazing people, like-minded, mm. passionate about similar things that we value. I've met, you know, had amazing intimate partners and, and relationships from it, great friendships, uh, uh, you know, and then the business model where we get paid to help people instead of a pyramid, everyone thinks it's the pyramid, right? Which is corporate America or corporate structures with the pharmaceutical industry. They all earn at the top. Um, 
the one, the many, and the few type of thing. That, that's the structure. Here in network marketing, it's a reverse pyramid because we're leading from, we're all leading and we're all helping each other. And there's people in my organization, you know, earning more than me. So mm. it's just, it's just a, it's just a beautiful business structure. And the only way we become successful is by helping other people be successful. Where in corporate structure, you want to get to the top and you can only win. But in network marketing, everyone can win if you, you know, do it for the right reasons and follow the systems and, you know, help, help people. If we lead with the product, that's the surest right. way to build a business with network marketing. So yeah, this is, this has gifted me so much. Um, and I think that, yeah, with the community, of, you know, in next year and the coming years, we really have to stick together. This knowledge that you've just shared is just like, it's life changing. And if any of this stuff is resonates with you guys at home, do your own research, um, get in touch with John, but um, we've been chatting for a long time. So what are your final comments on, you know, the men out there or the boys wanting to be men, um, and uh, any any last pieces of advice for for everyone at home? Yeah, um, yeah. Thanks. I mean, um, you know, you all can do it. Everybody's capable. Everybody's capable. Wherever you are, wherever the life circumstances is, uh, you can pick yourself up and you can go for it. So never, you know, my, it, you know, you can do it from wherever you are. It's just one more step. Just get up every morning, take another step on that journey. Uh, if you're watching this, you're in the right place. You're already starting to get connected to good people here. And uh, you're a reflection of who you're hanging out with. And as you start to prune your relationships and increase it with better relationships, you're just going to keep getting better. And you can do it. I mean, I, anybody here can do it. And uh, no matter how bleak your future may be or how great it is, you can continue to improve over here. And so this is a great interview. I like what you're doing for Men on Purpose, Zach, because I think it sounds to me like a great idea to give people other ideas to go find conversations and, uh, you know, you're willing to go, you know, connect, connect with other people and just take another step up. Thank you so much, John. This has been so awesome. I, I look forward to listening to this again. And uh, yeah. I want to recommend this to everyone in the community. And yeah, any, anyone out there, please share this around. Get in touch with John. I'll put his link around the video somewhere. But until then, John, thanks so much for your time. And uh, we'll see you next time. You bet. Sounds good.